Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome to another News From Scratch Roundup. Now, I didn't intend to do so many of this when I launched this just a few days back, but there's just been a flood of smallish game development news. Things that don't really deserve their own video, but definitely deserve to be talked about. So that's what we're doing here today. And you'll notice I am now using a uh, horizontal layout as opposed to a vertical one. A lot of people requested that. I actually like the other one better, to be honest, but at least you guys don't have to tilt your heads. And there will be timestamps down below. But we've got three pieces of news again today, and let's just jump in and take a look at it. Now, the first one is about a new release of the Diligent Engine. Now, the Diligent Engine is a lower level game framework. I've actually done uh, some details of this in the past. I'm not going to get into a lot of details about Diligent Engine, but if you needed a renderer and such to power your game, or you can wanted to start working at that lowish level, that's what the Diligent Engine is all about. And the new release, um, basically, the big things here are enabling Vulkan on Android and adding a C interface. So if C is your programming language of choice, Diligent Engine probably just got much nicer to work with. On top of that, there was a couple of API changes here, but the big one, of course, is that Vulkan on API is on, on Android, sorry, is now supported. Um, so that is out there. If you're interested in Diligent Engine, it is a completely open source project. It is available over on GitHub, also available at diligentgraphics.com. It is under the Apache 2 license. The code itself, I think, is mostly C++ based, um, but it is a lightweight cross-platform graphics API abstraction layer. Uh, so it kind of abstracts between the low-level stuff like Direct3D, Vulkan, and Metal while making your life you know, not having to deal with all that crap. And if you've ever looked at trying to get a triangle up and running on Vulkan, you're going to probably appreciate something like the Diligent Engine. As you can see here, it's on a number of different platforms, uh, Windows Universal, Windows or UWP, Linux, Android, Mac OS, and iOS. And the key thing with this release is this plus Vulkan here. So Vulkan is now available on Windows, Linux, and uh, Android, and technically kind of sort of on Mac OS and iOS because, well, Apple suck lately. And so you got to use an, a, an interpolation or a translation layer in the middle called Molten VK. Uh, but yeah, that's the big news here with the Diligent Engine. If you haven't checked out the Diligent Engine already, I will link to this uh, article I did on it in the past. It goes through a bit of the details, but here, of course, it'll take you hands on and walk through what you can see. This was rendered using the Diligent Engine. It's one of the samples it comes with. It is a very capable um, framework, so you don't have to deal with that nitty gritty of open. GL or Vulkan or so on. And as you can see, it is improving consistently, such as today when it got Vulkan support. All right, so that is news piece number one. News piece number two is another game engine. This one is the Play Canvas engine. Um, this is an HTML5 powered engine. I've done a couple of videos on it in the past. I've always been a fan of Play Canvas. If you want to work in 3D in um, JavaScript or HTML5, there aren't a lot of options, especially for top level engines. So, you know, you've got lower level stuff like 3JS, and then you've got um, basically two major higher level engines. There's um, Babylon and then there's Play Canvas. Play Canvas is probably the closer of the two to something like Unity, but for HTML5. And we've got a new update here, which just released a couple of hours ago. The big thing here is there is now a procedural mesh API. So if you wanted, and there's examples here for doing things like decals or decals, uh, deformation, generation, point cloud simulation, and so on. So if you wanted to basically start building meshes from scratch, code-based meshes, you can now do that with this release. On top of that, uh, you can load morph targets from GLTF 2.0 scenes, support for Draco compressed GL2, um, GLTF2 meshes, support for unlit GL2, uh, basically GLTF2, which is really hard to say for me for some reason. I've got a lot of improvements in this particular release. We got detail map support for standard materials, clear coat, uh, XR, uh, input sources to interact with the UI built from uh, element components, uh, better handling of XR input for both local and world space coordinates, added a raycast all example to uh, rigid body component system and an example to go with that. Um, and so on. So it, it's definitely an improvement here. The big thing, of course, is going to be this new procedural mesh API that opens up a whole realm of kind of stuff you can do with it. It makes it so you can actually start creating tooling with it. Uh, procedural mesh generation can be used for, you know, infinite world or trains or dynamically shaped objects and so on. So that does open a world of possibilities with that change. Now, if you're interested, Play Canvas itself, I did a uh, tutorial on this multi-part tutorial. Basically, I show how to create uh, this bowling game right here using Play Canvas. This is actually the game. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna press it because I believe the minute I do, it yells out bowling, bowling, and you don't want to hear that. So this walks you basically through creating a project using Play Canvas. Here is the editor. As I mentioned, it is the most Unity-like option that's out there. Also, do keep in mind that this was done two or three years ago, so things have advanced a great deal since then. Uh, I like Play Canvas. I think it's a, a great tool for creating 3D games. Um, it was also bought by somebody that was weird. Someone that was doing VR spectacles. 
I don't remember the name of the company right now, but it's a huge company, kind of like an Instagram level company actually bought Play Canvas a few years back. But anyways, that is uh, that. If you want to see a tutorial on basically creating your first game from scratch, uh, I have it right here. We've also got, it's a multi-part tutorial. And uh, there's also a video that goes with it, shows you this entire process step by step. So if you're looking to create a 3D game, a 3D game uh, in, in, or actually I guess for the browser, and technically the editor actually runs in the browser as well, um, Play Canvas is a great opportunity. There's also uh, TypeScript bindings, I believe. So if you prefer TypeScript over JavaScript, that is an option for you as well. Uh, but again, I've got a full thing. This will walk you through the entire process of creating a bowling style game, give you a good idea of what Play Canvas is all about. And as you can see from this release, Play Canvas now has uh, procedural mesh support, which is, uh, again, going to open a bunch of doors. And then the final bit of news today is a twofer, actually. We got two things together, uh, but they're both from uh, Kenny NL, also known as Asset Jesus. Uh, the first one is he just released a new uh, free model pack. So if you're looking for three uh, free assets, Kenny has been releasing them forever. Uh, so this one is the Nature Kit. So let's do the preview image here. This is up on Reddit. I will link all the relevant things before. It is an art asset pack, as you can see, just like this. And then I think the other one shows it in use. Let's go on back here and see the sample. And there you can see how the asset pack can all be used to work together to create a nature type scene. Uh, he's done a ton of asset scenes like this that um, you know all kind of can work together. Uh, you can start bringing in his other asset packs. It's a great way for prototyping your game. Now, of course, Kenny assets really have a distinctive look to them, so do be aware of that. But if you're like you know learning and trying to make something, having some good artwork to start from, especially game ready artwork, uh, it's really kind of invaluable. You don't have to spend a cent on it. So he has a huge number of these asset packs out there, and he just added a new one, this new spring. Uh, tile asset and then on related Kenny news uh, asset forge which I actually covered uh, about three weeks ago I think uh, and I will link that as well down below it's a tool that he's created for basically creating uh, 3d models really simply um, he just did an update for it uh, asset forge 2 preview 1c is now available uh, the additions are there's an eight camera preset for 2d sprite aspect uh, for, sorry 2d sprite exporting uh, 32 angle batch for 2d sprite exporting uniform scaling hold control while scaling and the ability to add uh, to load dot collection files um, and I believe that allows you to make more of a compound mesh than you could before. It is commercial software. It's about 20 bucks. As I said, uh, I just recently did a hands-on with Asset Forge, uh, previous, so it would be the version before this one. Um, and it will give you a really good idea of what Asset Forge is all about. Some really cool features in there. Basically, it's a, like a kit bashing modeling tool where you build out of pre-confined components to make more compound meshes. It's basically 3D kit bashing. Uh, but then it's got some really cool tools in there, like it can automatically rotate your camera around the 3D object and render it out. So you've got, if you're making a sprite case, sprite-based game instead of a 3D or polygonal game, you can now export out a sprite sheet and it does all the work for you. And as you can see, some of the sprite exporting got improved in this particular release. So also nice to see. So we got two things from Kenny. We got a new spring asset kit. We have the asset forge update. And then as I mentioned earlier on, the diligent engine was also updated, a low level cross-platform rendering framework uh, that now supports Android um, via um, Vulkan, which is ultimately going to be the way forward for Android. And then we've got a new update to Play Canvas. The big new feature there is procedural mesh API being exposed. And there's a lot of uh, demos out there that can walk you through what everything does. That's actually one of the other nice things about Play Canvas. It has a ton of uh, examples um, to work from and learn from. Uh, so we got yeah, new procedural mesh generation. So you can see this guy here the, where the bottom mesh is responding to the, the mesh above it. Cool stuff. It does open up a, a whole new world of opportunity. God, I sound like a Disney movie. All right, that's it. Um, so again, I, this isn't the new format for this channel. It just happens to be we've got a huge flood of smaller news stories, and it's, it's better to capture them to not. So um, hopefully you guys found this useful, and uh, stay tuned. Got some more traditional long-form videos coming very soon. That's it for now. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.